I uploaded my video on making a simple radius bending fixture about three years ago. This has become one of my most popular videos, getting about a million views so far. While this is a great technique for getting large and small radius bends in sheet metal, there are some other methods that work well too. In this video, I'll show how to make simple fixtures for producing accurate, repeatable bends in sheet metal. The bends can have a constant radius, or a taper, or a radius that gets larger or smaller as the bend progresses, like a scroll. You can make a faceted form with a sheet metal break, and when you bend sheet metal over the form, it produces a smooth bend. You'll have to do some experimentation to learn what size facets to use, since if they're too widely spaced, you'll see bumps in the bend. The type of metal you're bending and the thickness will determine the limits, so always do some test pieces before you make your fixtures. I work a lot with 1 16th aluminum, and I've learned that with this material, the facets must be one half inch or smaller, otherwise you'll see bumps in the finished bend. I'll make bends over two different forms so you can get an overview of the process, then I'll show you how to do the layout to make a new form. I have the smaller fixture positioned at the end of my table, and I'll put a piece of aluminum underneath it. I'll line the edge of the metal up with the form, and then clamp it to the table. And to make the band, I just lift this end up. So I've got about a 90 degree band. And now we'll do the same thing with the larger fixture. Again, I'll line up the front edge of my piece of metal with the front edge of the form. Get everything clamped to the table. And I'll make the second band. Again, I'll go to about 90. So if you take a close look at the band, you'll see that both bends are absolutely smooth. There's no fastening whatsoever. So even though the fixture has facets, the bends come out smooth. Now I'll show you how to do the layout on a fixture for a tapered bend. I'm going to start with the center line, and all my dimensions will be based off of this. So on this end, I'm going to make marks a half inch apart. and I'm going to have five marks on the right side of center and five marks on the left side of center. Let's get those in place. And on this end, I'm going to put my marks an eighth inch apart. Then I'm going to make a straight line between the marks that are farthest out. And just for convenience, I'll cut off the excess metal past this. And I'll do the same on the other side. I'll trim the waist off this now, and then we can do the bending. This is my bending break, and it has a stop on this end that limits how far it could bend. So I'm going to make a test piece. I put a center line on it. I'll get this clamped in the break, and then I'm going to make a bend and measure it. So we'll go just a little bit. My goal is to have a 15 degree bend, and I've set this protractor to 15 degrees, so we're almost there. It needs just a tiny, tiny bit more. So I'll bend it a little bit more. Check it again. And that is just about perfect. So I'm going to lock the angle stop in place. And now I'm ready to make the bends in our piece. I'll start with the lines closest to me. So I'll get this positioned in the break. Clamp it down. Then it'll come all the way up until the break stops. Release it. I'll go to the next line on this side and the next line on this side. Clamp it again. Pull it up to the stop. Go to the next line. And I'll keep working in this way. One more bend to go. So there's our tapered bending fixture. 
I'll put this on the bench and show you how it works. So I have the blank of metal cut to size. I'm going to put this on the table and then position the form on top of it. I'll get everything clamped into place. And now I'll bend the metal around the form. So that makes a beautiful bend, if I don't say so myself. It's absolutely smooth, with no bumps whatsoever. The next fixture I make will be for a changing radius. It will start with a tight radius band, and the bend will become less and less pronounced as it goes toward the other end. And there's two ways to accomplish this. One way is to make the bends the same distance apart and to change the angle of each bend with less angle as we go toward the outside end. The other is to make all the bends the same angle, but to change the distance between the bends. Because my brake has such a nice stop for the angle, I'm going to use the same angle for each bend. So I'll do a layout that becomes progressively larger toward the end. So I have a line that I'll start my dimensions from, and I'm going to increase the dimensions 1 8 inch on each increment. So the first line I make will be an eighth inch away from our layout line. Then adding an eighth to that, the next line will be a quarter inch away from that. Then adding an eighth, we'll go to three eighths. Then we'll go to a half. Then we'll go to five eighths. Then to three quarters. Then to seven eighths. Then one inch, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths, and inch and a half. I could do the same layout on this side and then draw straight lines between them, but I think it'll be faster to use a square to transfer the line from one side to the other. I'll flip the square over. Earlier I said that these lines have to be close together, and for a tight radius bend they do. But for a gradual radius curve like we'll have on this side, they actually can be spaced farther apart. So let's go to the brake and bend this up. I've set the angle stop on the brake for 8 degrees, so I'm ready to start making the bends. I'll go right up against the stop, pull it out to the next line, make the second bend. Okay, our fixture is complete. Let's try it out. So here's the blank of metal for the graduated bend. I'll position this right at the edge of the table. Then I'll put the fixture on top of that. I'll hold it with a spring clamp temporarily. Then I'll use C-clamps to really hold the corners down tight. And I'll bend to the center mark. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to make another bend from the other side. So I'll position this on the edge of the table. Again, I'll hold it temporarily with a small spring clamp. Then I'll put the C-clamps in place and make a bend from the other direction. So once again, I've got a beautiful bend. This could be the cowl for a race car or the hood for a street rod. There's many different shapes that you could make using this technique. So this is an easy way to make a beautiful curve. And if you bend both sides of your piece over the same fixture, you know the part will be symmetrical. And that's actually quite difficult to do with other techniques. So this is an easy technique that allows you to make many different curved shapes out of sheet metal by working over simple faceted forms. I love making these videos and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment and I do my best to answer all questions. 
If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos. I'll see you next time.